So I did my book report on Ruth's, Rachel's, Garlic and Sapphires. So it is a book about Ruth Rachel. Uh, she was a New York Times food critic. Um, and it's about, it's kind of like a, a journal of her life throughout the time. Um, it, it starts, of course, with, you know, what led up to her becoming a food critic. Um, she worked in California mainly. She worked at the LA Times. And then finally, um, she took a position at the New York Times, which she thought that um, she was, really wasn't ready for. But she took it anyway. So she moved her family to New York. And um, she became a food critic there. So while, as she started, be, you know, reviewing restaurants, she learned that, of course, her face was um, basically on, like, posters in the back of house and, like, alerting people who she was. And at the, t at the second that they knew who she was, they would treat her in a different manner. So she came up with an idea where she built a disguise for most of the big restaurants that she ever critiqued. Uh, the book is divided into chapters. Uh, these chapters are divided um, based on her on her disguises. Um, so it goes the daily special, backstory, and then it fo followed by um, Molly, Miriam, Chloe, Brenda, Betty, Emily, and um, there's chapters in between that, but mostly um, maybe about half the chapters are completely based on a disguise that she made. So um, she describes how she, she she kind of changed who she was during that time. Um, she would get wigs. She would change the way she dressed. She would change her age as much as she could, wear you know very high heels, be like a French businesswoman who's very wealthy, and then be a a 70 year old woman in like very grungy clothing um, and go to a very fancy restaurant as if it were, you know, something that she'd been saving up for her whole life and then see how the service was different. Um, when she, each chapter ends with her critique of the restaurant and she would usually combine um, how it was going in in her disguise versus how it was going in as herself. Uh, there were times where restaurants served her just as well for, you know, being a 65-year-old woman who doesn't really look that she can afford at the restaurant that she's in. And sometimes, you know, she was put in the corner with the worst server, never given any attention, close to the bathroom. You know, the food was different. The alcohol was different. Everything about the experience would be different um, in certain restaurants based on what she was wearing. And I think her point was just that, as a customer, you know, there are times where you're in a restaurant that you can't necessarily afford, but you still, you know, you're treating yourself to that experience. And there shouldn't be a restaurant that that discriminates you because of that. You should try not to judge a book by its cover and to, to actually just serve the person, you know, recommend everything just as if they were one of your regulars, give them as much attention and just give them the same service, the same food quality every time just to increase um, the popularity of your restaurant. Um, she definitely, I don't know, it kind of seemed like she would judge certain restaurants a little bit more harsh, uh, harshly because they were restaurants that other food critics in the past, like the previous New York um New York Times food critic. Um, she judged those restaurants a little bit more, more roughly because I think she was trying to make a name for herself, and she wanted to to unveil restaurants that weren't necessarily like John George or Joel Rubichon. Um, essentially, if if it would have been set in Las Vegas, I feel like she would have gone to to Chinatown to you know, North Town, and just to try to find restaurants that are unique, that um, offer a certain cuisine that isn't, you know, Italian um, or French. And she definitely, a lot of her, um, you know, her anecdotes or short stories were about restaurants that she went to within um, Chinatown in New York and how she tried to, to bring more emphasis to those restaurants and that um, the New York Times 
brand itself wanted her maybe to focus on rest more expensive restaurants, restaurants with a prefix menu, things like that. Um, and she really wanted to explore a lot of different restaurants within New York, um, not necessarily expensive restaurants, just restaurants that um, offered cuisine that, you know, that others didn't. She valued service a lot. Um, she brought she brought people that were pickier with her sometimes, um, like pickier than her um, in her critiques. And then there were people like like her, her son that she'd bring uh, just to show a good time. So the book really, I feel like the, the overall message is that it, at the end, um, she, she decided that she didn't want to be a food critic. So she, you know, she resigned from her post as the New York Times food critic, and she decided to spend more time with her family. So cooking with her family, you know, she moved back to California, and it was just, it was kind of a self-empowering book only because she was a woman in, in, with so much power. Um, she had to wear disguises so that she, you know, she could be judged and served um, as an individual fairly without that prejudice um, of being the New York Times food critic. Um, and she didn't really enjoy her post. She noticed that... Um, she was starting to prefer the prefix, you know, the, she started to become a snob, is what, what, how her and her husband put it in the book, and she decided that it would be better for herself and for her family to move on, essentially, uh, resign from her post, and, you know, becoming a, essentially a household mom, um, uh, who, who worked, um, from her home, she cooked with her children, she cooked meals every day, and she just decided that that was the life that she wanted to live. So not necessarily meaning that that's something that I want to do in my own career. Um, just just an interesting book. Um, it happens to be a New York Times bestseller. It's it's a wonderful book. It's a really easy read. Um, I really I really do recommend it um, to to women who want to progress in the food and beverage industry. Only because it shows kind of two sides of it. So like how happy she was, how honored she was to receive, you know such an important post at such a young age, um, only after working for the LA Times for a couple years. But then it, and it shows her experience, which was amazing, you know, best meals that she'd ever had, things like that. It was very, very, very descriptive, a wonderful book. And then at the end, it just showed that as, as happy as she was, in her post as the, the food critic of the New York Times, she chose her family above that. And, um, you know, continue to be in the world of food, but, um, you know, she was able to, to escape that world and to choose what was best for her. So I thought that was really interesting. Again, my review was on Ruth Rachel's um, Garlic and Sapphires, The Secret Life of a Critic in Disguise. Thank you. Bye-bye.